Good evening, Uganda. You're listening to 933 KFM. This is the Friday edition of the Hot Seat, where we discuss the major stories of the week. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabaro. And today I have a panel of two, Derek Wandera, a reporter of the Nation Media Group, as well as uh, Jimmy Achalam Odoki, who is uh, a regular on the show. And the major story of the week is the much uh, touted, much talked about, much discussed, much to Parliament, a protest against uh, uh, corruption, uh, especially in uh, Parliament uh, that was uh, led by young Ugandans who have been dubbed as uh, Generation Z or Z or Generation uh, Zoomers. Uh, before I uh, go further into the discussion, uh, just to let you know that uh, your copy of the Saturday Monica is already on the streets, and uh, the headline in tomorrow's paper is Judiciary on Trial, uh, the use of uh, defective charge sheets, stringent bail conditions, and the willingness to quickly remand peaceful protesters to jail has put the justice law and order sector in the dock uh, being accused of silencing dissent instead of upholding the rule of law and constitutionalism. We have more details uh, uh, on that story on uh, pages uh, four and five. The uh, picture on the front page is a rather interesting one. Uh, I see elements of uh, the UPDF military police uh, manhandling an anti-corruption protester outside uh, parliament on Tuesday. Uh, this uh, round of protests started on Tuesday and uh, is still ongoing. Uh, however, the latest figures that I have uh, show that uh, about 114 uh, people have been uh, arrested. Uh, of these, 14 have uh, since been released, uh, 4 have been granted bail, and about 83 of the 114 are on remand in uh, different prisons across Kampala. Uh, this is uh, Machison Bay, Kampala remand, and uh, the women's uh, prison in Luzira. According to, these are figures according to Agora Discourse, which is one of the CSOs coordinating efforts to trace those that have been arrested or have uh, disappeared. We'll keep you updated on uh, what's going on with that. But uh, you can also follow our platforms, 933KFM, Daily Monitor, as well as other nation media platforms for the latest on these uh, protests. So, gentlemen, I'll begin with you, Derek Wandera. You've been in the newsroom. What exactly? Uh, I know the, 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 the protests were not a surprise on Tuesday. The, Organizers had been uh, talking about them for at least two weeks, but what exactly happened on Tuesday? <coughs> yeah, um, the, no the nation woke up on Tuesday um, uh, in full expectation of exactly what happened, uh, the protests, mm. because there had been there had been a precursor on Monday mm -hmm. where the uh, officers of the new party were cordoned off by police, arrested mm -hmm. several of their leaders, including uh, legislators like the, Fra the Honorable Francis Zake, mm -hmm. um, among others. So there had been a precursor, and uh, the stage had been set. Had been set mm -hmm. on Tuesday, around 10 a.m. in the morning. Several of the of the protesters started marching on the streets, especially downtown Kampala. Mm -hmm. um, if with efforts that they can reach to parliament and make uh, their voices heard to the leadership of parliament, but also all the parliamentarians. Mm. And what did they want to uh, address to parliament? They wanted, they had, they had very many issues, but at top of the issues uh, was the issue of corruption and, and seeking accountability. Of course, mm. many of the voices that we had on that day were uh, calling on the speaker of parliament to step down and resign. Uh, with allegations of corruption and then we had uh, so many people also shouting uh, the names of the of the four commu backbench commissioners in parliament uh, led by the honorable um, Puga, Mathias Mpuga and many demands for many MPs who have been uh, mi MPs and ministers who have been caught in the corruption scandal story mm. to just come out and put the things out, to put the record clear, mm. set the record clear, but also uh, clear the air on some of the 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 uh, innuendos of corruptions that mm. have been uh, uh, spelled out by. Mm. The Was there any particular reason why the protesters chose Tuesday? Well, I I actually I actually did it have anything to do with the resumption of Parliament from recess? Absolutely, mm. there was uh, a whole bit about the resumption of, of, of Parliament because you know Parliament had been in, on recess, mm. um, and, and and Tuesday was one of the days that they were going to have 
plenary. Mm. In fact, they had plenary from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday until it was suspended, I think, on Thursday. Mm. But uh, the main aim was to make sure that Parliament is in is in is in is in is in session is in, is in session, mm. such that they meet every uh, every of their audience there, mm. which I which I think they in themselves knew that they would have never reached Parliament or even entered that parliamentary uh, compound, mm. but then for sure they wanted those voices to go out. They wanted their message to be sent, which I feel the message has actually been sent. Mm. It has sunk. Mm. And 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 we can we can only wait because the reaction by Parliament to send Parliament back into recess mm -hmm. uh, uh, in uh, in in almost un, uh, un, unceremoniously is equivocal. A message to show that the Parliament is actually listening. Mm -hmm. Probably this is a time they have to go back uh, into their uh, into their benches mm -hmm. and. And, and think about this message and see how to respond mm. to the protesters who have already said that that's not the end. Next week, they will be back on the streets. And uh, the Daily Monitor this week also published the seven demands uh, of these protesters, yes. uh, mm. number one being the resignation of uh, uh, the, the Right Honourable Anita Monk, mm. uh, who is the Speaker of Uganda's Parliament, the resignation of the four uh, backbench commissioners who are accused of uh, illegally appropriating themselves uh, uh, some allowances. Uh, number three is reducing the number of members of parliament. Number four, that members of parliament involved in any corruption res uh, scandal should resign as investigations go on. Number five, auditing of the lifestyles of all members of parliament and publicizing it. Number six, cutting salaries and allowances of all members of parliament to three million shillings. And number seven, allowing Ugandans to continuously exercise their democratic right to peacefully assemble uh, without blockage. Jimmy, I want to come to you. When you read through all these demands and uh, the theme of the march, the march to parliament, clearly the target of these demonstrations is very clear, the parliament of Uganda. The aim of the dis dissatisfaction is clear, the parliamentarians and the parliament of Uganda. So what explains these stories we're hearing from uh, the Uganda police and now being reoccurred by the president that somehow there's something ulterior behind the protest and it's not just a march to parliament? I think when you think about the online exhibition, mm. which was about parliament, essentially, mm. the corruption and everything, mm. those, the people behind it are, you know, quote, mm. in quote, called, you know, pe pe people working for, they are foreign agents. I think that is the linkage they're trying to get. Mm. How this uh, awareness came through, mm. who sponsored, I mean, they may think they're being, they're getting money from mm. out, out there. Mm. there it, it hasn't been very clear to point exactly the, how the foreign, the foreign, the foreign agents, or the yeah. foreign. But before we go into the foreign agents thing, because uh, when we talk about the demands of the protesters, these are ideally the very same things President Yoram Museveni has addressed in the last few months, including calling, uh, writing to the Speaker of Parliament about allegations of corruption in the House, directing the DPP to prosecute some of the members of Parliament who have been involved in uh, corruption scandals. In fact, some of them are, are currently in the courts uh, uh, being prosecuted for some of these crimes. So, in any case, the demands of these protesters align very much with the campaign, the anti-corruption campaign that President Yoram Seven is, is uh, championing. Yeah, yeah. So, is President Yoram Seven also being sponsored by foreign no, agents? Uh, the president thinks it should be is a monopoly him <laughs> to do it, not other people. The, the anti-corruption crusade is his monopoly. Yes, so but it in it his is, addresses, he has is. called upon patriotic it Ugandans to report to him the corrupt, and he said what? he had been it, doing it, his research. It, it, it now he's armed with information, so he wants patriotic Ugandans to help him prosecute the thieves. So for he, he's so scared, he thinks it will cast his government in bad light. Mm. And the people who are doing it, and the not people mentioned in these corruption scandals cut across the political aisle. They are opposition members of parliament implicated, including the former leader of opposition in parliament. There are some NRM commissioners implicated. So this is not a, uh, a fight uh, uh, against uh, uh, the NRM; it's a fight against corruption. So is is President Yoram Seveni or his government saying that in this particular case they stand with the corrupt against the anti-corruption no, crusaders? First, it might to outsiders it might seem that he is. He has failed or is incompetent. Mm. He's not managing it well. Mm. So other people are now trying to. He wants it 
to be seen that is the one in charge of everything, you know, mm. pointing out so and so is wrong, mm. this one is corrupt. Mm. It is. But how does the conduct of uh, these protesters in any way show that uh, President Yoram Seven is a weakling or that he has failed in the fight against corruption? In fact, it shows that there is support to his fight against corruption. And that this support to, to is begin, widespread among young Ugandans. The, the, the most corrupt or the, the, the majority are people have been associated with the government. Mm. A few might be in opposition. Mm. So if, if many of your people are, especially when the, the major demand is that the speaker should resign, mm. and uh, what, how does it, to an outsider, how does it look? Mm. So uh, tell me, how does it run? <laughs> <laughs> so an outsider, Derek Wandera, many of these young people who were arrested had, in fact, not even stepped on the streets. I know about four of them uh, were arrested in a parking lot. Uh, they had just parked their cars. So we can't say, uh, according to what the police is saying, that somehow these people were planning to burn down parliament or to cause chaos on the streets of uh, Kampala. They literally had just left their homes. I know of people who are who are actually you named uh, you, you you gave us figures of the people who are who are in prison who have been given um, who are big, who are on remand mm. about uh, eighty three eighty three and then those who are who have been uh, bailed and stuff but there are those who are missing mm. and yet they were picked and we don't know whether they are in prison or they are in their homes or whatever of course they are not in their homes mm. but they have gone a wall mm. um, so there is that also that number. It is it is it is very true that there are many people who are picked from their houses without even showing any sign that they will get out to go to the streets, mm. and they were picked just because uh, someone sat in a, in a room and suspected that these this particular person might be uh, thinking about something like this. Mm. Derek, um, I want to ask you: Do you think the issue of corruption in Uganda is such a serious concern that Ugandans don't need any incentive from what the president calls foreign actors? To be able to act on it or to express their displeasure you don't see, they see the broken down roads don't they see the terrible state of our health care there are many people these ugandan citizens mm. there are many people who have who have been saying i i have not been part of them mm. but probably i agree with them mm. that uh that the person who is supposed to be fighting corruption in this in this country mm. is the biggest culprit of corruption and who is that the person who is supposed to be leading the fight of corruption mm. has the fight against, against corruption the, yes the fight against corruption mm. has had so many stories a, a, around corruption tainted on him who is this the person who is supposed to be <laughs> on the streets he has actually <laughs> moved on the streets uh, and, and 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 the major reason as to why people are saying probably the government is broken too broken to fight corruption themselves mm. probably the government is not is not um competent enough mm. to even like point a finger they don't have the moral authority of pointing a finger at any corrupt person because they have been mm. in the stories of corruption in 20 in two, 2008 they the then igg uh Irene Irene said i think 2018 mm. was 2018 yes mm. said that we fight corruption but every person we are fighting ends up at the back of the president mm. and when so the are you person goes, that the person when you're the mentioning person, earlier is the, is the president. When the president person goes serving. behind the president, <laughs> is, the president is back. You <laughs> cannot fish them from there. Hmm. It means the president is shielding them. So the and president of seven is the biggest shield of the corrupt. We'll take a short commercial that break and when we come back, <laughs> more of this discussion. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. You're listening to 933 KFM. This is the Friday panel of journalists. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tawaru, and in studio today, I have a panel of two, Derek Wandera, a reporter with the Nation Media Group, as well as Jimmy Achalam. We're discussing the ongoing anti-corruption protests across the country that uh, started on Tuesday. Just a reminder that uh, your copy of the Saturday Monitor is already on the streets, and uh, the headline uh, tomorrow is on uh, anti-corruption protests and the stress test on the judiciary. Uh, as I had uh, earlier informed you in the first segment, uh, now we know about eight protesters have been paraded before courts of law, uh, where they've been uh, uh, charged with uh, something called uh, the offense of being idle and uh, disorderly. You remember that uh, uh, this offense uh, was uh, repealed a couple of years ago, and uh, President Yoram Seveni was quoted uh, on uh, the platform called uh, Twitter, or otherwise uh, known as X, saying that uh, this offense is part of a colonial relic of vagrancy laws dis uh, d that disproportionately affects uh, citizens in the lower ranks of uh, economic uh, status. And he directed uh, the DPP and other government agencies to release all those Ugandans who had been arrested under that 
a cake law. Rather surprising that uh, only two years uh, later, some uh, young people, professionals, including uh, a lady reporter on this uh, uh, very station, would be arrested uh, under this very frivolous uh, law. Gentlemen, I want to come back to you and uh, focus on President Yorim Seveni's uh, statement that came out yesterday. I want to quote him verbatim. He says, uh, I want to congratulate the armed forces and the security forces and the Wanainchi for failing or not participating in the bad demonstration that was planned for Tuesday. The, the demonstration had two bad elements. Element number one was funding from foreign sources that are always meddling in the internal affairs of Africa for the last 600 years, uh, causing slave trade, colonialism, neocolonialism, genocide, economic exploitation, ETC. All those involved should know that Uganda is not a neocolony where those shallow schemes can be deployed. The second element was that some of the authors and participants of the demonstrations were planning very bad things against the people of Uganda. Those very bad things will come out in court when, they're, when those arrested are being tried. It's possible that some of the participants did not know of the planned foreign funding and the planned bad things. That is why they should have listened to the police advice not to go on with the demonstration by the rubbish, the police advice. The statement uh, goes on. But, uh, gentlemen, I want to focus on this particular element number one and element uh, number two. And I think this is something we've consistently seen in President Yorim Seveni's uh, uh, statements. Somehow, uh, the president believes that there's no anger against corruption that would be serious enough to drive Ugandans to go into the streets and that Ugandans can only be incentivized by the hand of uh, foreign elements. This is rather intriguing coming from a president who has been in charge for the last 40 years that his own citizens don't have the urgency to speak out on matters that concern them and they can only do so with the help of outsiders. They always speak like that. And they when you say they, you mean? The presidents. Okay, the president. Some presidents. Okay, mm. speak like that. But ours if is, I can, is, if is, I can, is uh, if I can quite particular you. on this one because he has appeared with the South African president and called his own citizens lazy. I can I can give you context or even some examples of, of for instance, when the mandamano was taking place in Kenya, mm. but also even these corrupt these protests that are happening in Kenya. You remember mm. the first speech that came out from the president of of Kenya, Uhuru. That Kenya. foreign elements are involved. Yes, in he said. These are criminals who are being funded by foreign elements. No, it's understandable. Like, and, I'm, I'm saying and, uh, presidents and, can say that, but yes. in, in, in President Museveni's particular case, they, there is a trail. What I can tell you is until mm. you get to a position like Raila got, mm. and well, you, you ask Raila, Raila Odinga, Raila Odinga. Mm. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Uhuru, mm. uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> William Ruto mm. of Kenya, mm. until you get to that position that the citizenry have pushed you to the wall, and you are seeing them, they are facing you like direct and saying, mm. Please step down. Mm. Ruto, Enda, mm. Undoka, una, una, una. Mm. Until you get to that position, mm. you will then accept the truth of the matter that my citizen, my citizens, the people I am leading in this country actually have ears, have the nose, mm. have the brains mm. to understand any and everything that's happening mm. in Uganda. And you, as a president, you also know exactly what's happening. Mm. I mean, it doesn't take... Um, for instance, me, mm -hmm. to be funded, to know that there is corruption that's happening mm -hmm. in Parliament, mm -hmm. or you, mm -hmm. or anyone around us. If I came out and I said, okay, there is corruption happening in Parliament, and allegations have been thrown all over, and there is not even just allegations, mm -hmm. but and The President has evidence. mentioned it in the State of the Nation address. Great. Yes. Evidence. That there is corruption in that house. You have said, you also have said that there is corruption in that house, and you also have said that you know the cocoons of people who are uh, uh, Minister of Finance, Minister and, Parliament. Of Finance and Parliament mm. who are exchanging money. Mm. And when citizens are coming to back your your, 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 your speeches, mm. you're saying they have been funded. <laughs> so who funds <laughs> President Museveni to say that that he has he, they, 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 they are corrupt, corrupt cartels in, in, his, in government. his government? Who, who funds him? Mm. But gentlemen, I, I want to interrogate element one of uh, you know President Yoram Museveni's uh, statement saying that uh, that uh, the funding from foreign forces that are always meddling in the internal affairs of Africa over the last uh, 600 years and that Uganda is uh, not a new colony where all those schemes... Again, coming back to your point, there was an anti-corruption march in December 2019 yes. led by none other than President Yoram yes. Seven. Yes. had the Speaker of Parliament then, uh, the Right Honourable Jacob Olanya, may he rest in, uh, may his soul rest in peace. The Prime among, Minister. Uh, the Prime Minister among many other government dignitaries and the march was from City Square all the way to Kololo. 
It was not on a weekend, it was on a weekday. It was not after work hours, it was during work during. hours in the morning. Yes. And it did not last one hour, two hours, it lasted close to six hours. Yes. So, these young people communicated to police two weeks prior, met with the police, asked that, please, provide the security, guide on where, which routes we're, uh, we're going to use, and decided eventually on Tuesday to protest and make their, uh, their case heard before parliament. In what way do they contravene the, the president's call on patriotic Ugandans to join him in the fight against corruption? And in what way do they portray this element of uh, foreign interference and uh, people who have been meddling in Africa's affairs for the last 600 years? There's people who, who, mention, who mention things just for, for stage management, mm. saying patriotic Ugandans should come and join me in this call. And yet they, do, they know very well that if pat, real patriotic Ugandans <laughs> actually rose, down, <laughs> rose up, he would be the, one, the first one to shoot them down mm. to keep quiet. You get mm. it's, it's It's so much of double standards mm. that the president is speaking with this side of his mouth and in the other day he's speaking with this, with, mm. with, with, so he speaks with both sides of his mouth. Mm. Let me tell you, if you have people, cabinet ministers whom you have fired mm. from cabinet because of Corruption. corruption. Mm. If you have cabinet ministers who are on remand mm. because of corruption, mm. when every citizen wakes up and says, we are marching to state house for you to give us, you even welcome them and give them a cup of tea mm. and tell them, sit down, let me address this okay. thing. Mm. Because you are speaking my mind. This is what we need to fight. So what do we do? I mean, you need to speak to the people directly. You need to be with the people in such a fight. Mm. Otherwise, we are going to say, President Museveni, you are fighting against Ugandans mm. Jimmy, corruption. Uh, your take on uh, President Seven is saying that Uganda is not a neo colony. Certainly, uh, President Yoram Seven is Uganda is not a neo colony. And indeed, if we don't want to be a neo colony, that is being controlled by other countries through their institutions, the IMF and World Bank, we should be using our very little resources quite wisely and uh, not allowing for them to be stolen. But what do I see? Uh, I see Uganda being on its knees when the World Bank and IMF say, look here, you've passed this bad law and we're going to punish you. And yes, President Yoram Seveni makes these grandstanding statements, but on the side he's sending emissaries to go and negotiate with these people. Don't you s see a sense of irony in uh, Very you ironic know, this in statement by President Yoram Seveni? If you look at even Nagoa, you know, you talk here, these people, then you, <laughs> you begin sending you know, all emissaries the, yes, to go and talk. <laughs> so he knows we have rely on the West, uh, mm. what, what he refers to as uh, new colonialism. Mm. He uses that uh, selectively when it benefits him. You know, when he thinks, if I portray it this way, mm. then the people will say, hey, mm. this is actually not our thing. We are mm. being pushed. Mm. He is not very, you know, he's a politician, so he, he, he uses it depending on how it benefits him. Mm. But also, when we go to the corruption, when the world talks about, you know, the president trying to justify, you know, there are some people who make mistakes. Mm. We have to understand. You see, now he knows they are corrupt, but mm. he's fine, trying to find a leeway mm. to get them out of that. He, maybe he's caught between, you know, he doesn't. So he wants, he wants to have that authority to decide mm. what to do with who. Mm. And then if you leave these young people, Gen Z's, mm. They, they might come with some, and, and uh, he has admitted that who is not, if he decides to have <coughs> each corrupt person, who will he work with? Mm. And these people, when they come, of course, they will not be kind. And but so. in the past, he has praised these young people. He said he, he educated them, he immunized them, they went to school <laughs> under UPE, USE, and that they are the descendants of the original uh, resistance army, and they are not as corrupt as their parents, the old civil service that inherited from the previous bad regimes. So he has essentially say these are the right people he needs to work with so now he says but he it, no longer has control it, over them and somehow it, they are controlled it, by foreign forces he has fears that's why, why do you deploy so heavily like that why was the heavy military deployment mm. because you think something can start like that and then it gets out of hand and then you have no control so you first get them to fear to you know deploy show them what your capabilities are mm. but the good thing that they, they were not uh, you know they, 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 they went on they were not scared mm. so gentlemen <coughs> we'll take a short commercial break and when we come back another segment of this yeah, 
Welcome back from the break. You're listening to 933 KFM. This is the Friday panel of journalists. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is me, Kwezi Tabaru. And today in studio I have Jimmy Achalam as well as uh, Derek Wandera. We're discussing the major story of the week, which is the ongoing anti-corruption protest that started on Tuesday. Already upwards of 100 Ugandans have been arrested and uh, 80 of them are in the courts. Uh, remanded to uh, prisons in and around of Kampala and uh, like uh, uh, Derek said uh, we have a few others who are still unaccounted for uh, having been arrested on Tuesday or another subsequent days of the week. Uh, gentlemen I want to come back to President Yoweri uh, Museveni's uh, statement that uh, came out yesterday. Uh, he continues to say that the planners of Tuesday's demonstration however were not bothered uh, with such issues. I politely advised them a few days ago in my address to the nation. They, obvious, uh, they obviously thought that my advice was of no consequence. Please, Ugandans, avoid these mistake makers. The evidence <coughs> in court will shock many. As I said above, the planners of these demonstrations wanted to do very bad things. The charge by the police of, quote unquote, idle and disorderly, I suspect, was used because the deployed personnel did not have all the information. This was a high-quality intelligence-led operation. I have most of the information. Gentlemen, again, sticking to the president's uh, statement, he says <laughs> that the charge of Ida and disorderly, he suspects, was used by the deployed personnel who did not have all the information. So, <laughs> number one, these are professional <laughs> police officers, military police, deployed on the streets, carry out this very sensitive operation and they don't even know what charge to put on these uh, uh, alleged uh, protesters. But somehow, this very group of people have collected enough evidence that will shock the nation and pin <laughs> these alleged in protesters in time. court. So the same incompetent people who couldn't know which charge mm. To, <laughs> to, mm. to, to, to bring uh, to these people will somehow provide this high quality information in the courts of law. Something doesn't add up here. Yeah, um, Quez, you, you, you should have been listening to the undertones and the aftermath of these protests. Mm. The protest was geared towards addressing the issues in Parliament. Mm. But do you know how the, the, the protest ended up victimizing, not even victimizing, but, but, but bringing the police into the limelight mm. not even like in the good in the good in the good limelight mm. but the bad limelight mm. you saw the lead of uh, of daily monitor on wednesday mm. they took a very huge picture of of of, of the policemen shielding mm. with the shields mm. and the the headline was shield of corruption mm. <laughs> police <laughs> has come under such scrutiny mm. at such a momentous epoch mm. where that they do cannot. you think the police in Uganda has such a high reputation to keep that? Of course they goes? don't. Mm. Of course they don't. But it's important that while this goes on, that we're fighting corruption, mm. we also need to help the police to understand that in as much as you're protecting the corrupt, mm. of course police is also corrupt, in as much as you're trying to protect corruption, it mm. doesn't but help you as the institution. But is it the institution as, as of the police institution. protecting the corrupt or individuals within police protect, uh, protecting the corrupt? It is the, the institution. Yes. Because when there is deployment, I don't think they go single see, uh, 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 picking, mm. hand picking that you Wandera, uh, Wandera Jimmy. Jimmy, they deploy mm. and when we see a police officer, even if it's one, it's a representation of the whole institution. Mm. And if you are coming out to show that light to the, to the, to the, to, to the, to, to the public that you are defending the corrupt mm. and yet even corruption in and of itself doesn't help you mm. you know i i was listening but, to but don't you think there we're being a bit unfair at least to, to, the, to the individuals within the police because uh, police in uganda does not come from mars they are they live in this very they society live, they are yes. affected by the bad roads yes. the poor quality on, of social, on, on social day, services and all on that a day like their salaries are not some of the best and the, not yesterday the worst. yesterday mm. i visited some of the uh, protesters who were arrested and uh, are in Luzira, and they told me very interesting stories of their engagement and interaction with the police. That even while they were being arrested, some policemen were telling them that, "Look, we support your cause because we think the issues you're raising are of concern to us." I covered, uh, I covered the Honorable Chagula. So, so as the media, during, I think we also need just, to play that. Let me just, let me just help you. Mm. I, 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 I covered the Honorable Chagulani mm. during the past election. Mm. And there are so many voices I picked for my stories from police officers telling Chagulani, we are behind you. Mm. You just need to push further. Mm. Those voices are always there because they are coming from an individual. Mm. One individual 
from one individual to another. Mm. But we want to one day see mm. the police that has been deployed sit back and say, mm. you guys, mm. do you think? Mm. But that also, would be a mutiny. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not a mutiny. I mean, it will show their commitment mm. to the cause. Mm. We want to hear one day that the police has interrogated investigated and convicted people to the line no, well, police can't in do corruption. that the courts have to do that of course <laughs> and and where does the investigation start from uh, the investigations the and even the police for the judiciary to be able to take a standing decision mm. they have to based on the on the on the on the, on the, on the, on the evidence the mm. that has been offered by by police in most cases mm. they will not have evidence and they will this but case uh, will uh, just back this to my question on. that uh, don't you if you were government mm. uh wouldn't you be worried that the longer these protests go on, not only are you radicalizing the young people, but you're also radicalizing elements within the security forces, the police? It's all, because it, I it saw the, some of the young people uh, confronting the police and saying, look, why are you harassing us? We're actually fighting for your rights. Uh, you know, places where you stay are not, are not the best accommodation yes. that you mm. deserve as, mm. uh, as, as officers of the Uganda police. So mm. certainly you need to, uh, uh, to join our cause. So... Being a one-off thing on a Tuesday, random protests in Kampala may not make so much of a difference. A difference. But should these protests continue for three weeks, a month, something has got to give. And to, to give you another story, I was, I was in Luzira. The atmosphere there is more like a carnival. You have mm. lots of young people. Yeah. I, I even saw uh, the, the MD of this publication mm. uh, there to visit uh, a colleague of ours who was arrested. But you have hundreds of young people professionals and all these kinds of people coming who, together yes previously we were not bothered by what yeah. was happening in the country but now they feel that there's something that is happening and they need to show up and show solidarity don't forget that the people who man the uganda police and the uganda prisons are also young people just pretty much like us yes so if there are concerns that are generation presented by generation z zoomers and all that they're also generation zoomers in, in the police and the prison so for government of uganda this i think goes beyond you know this rhetoric that you know somehow there are foreigners involved yes foreigners might still be uh, involved i don't know to what extent the president is aware uh, about and involvement but it, certainly there are there are serious generational concerns that government of uganda needs to pay attention to jimmy Achala. so there are two things mm -hmm. about when he talks about the president says bad things mm -hmm. and he doesn't doesn't specify mm -hmm. he's trying to break the spirits like if you're involved mm -hmm. Then you know some of you you're you involved with very bad people. Very bad. Uh, secondly, mm -hmm. maybe even the people who are going to be, you know, the the the, the magistrates, the mm -hmm. people involved in the cases, gives the a certain bias that these are really terrible people. If you so he's doing two things. The law he says, you know, idle and disorderly doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Two, these are so it's he thinks perhaps he thought that nipped it in the bud that mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen mm -hmm. but took them by surprise mm -hmm. and says if we don't act and this like you're saying two three weeks they're, they're just trying to mm -hmm. suppress mm -hmm. so that it doesn't but if, if we were to go by the president in uh, uganda's courts usually these charges don't stand I mean, if we had follow the threats by but President Yoram Seven, suddenly you know, people like uh, Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesija would, would be rotting in jail yeah. on treason charges, uh, yeah, or Bobby Wine, you, you know, among first, so many others. First of all, but these you, charges you, you don't hold in you court. You know mm. what he's been arguing about bail. Mm. And another lawyer says, you know, bail is now used as a punishment. They say you first push them in, mm. and then you say we are giving them bail. But mm. you have sort of, it's sort of a punishment. Mm. And then he says, why are you even giving bail? Mm. If he's this is it might equate the the case to treason or to when he says it's very bad mm. and even quite the assumption know. is that when those people go to jail that they're actually suffering and they are remorseful because from you know the people i interviewed there in jail they're just about as upbeat as they were when they were on the outside and the well, longer you keep you them see, there what, <laughs> they for them, they, they what become they, matters on the they, outside they think they have kept them away maybe they are the ringleaders maybe they would inspire other people so mm. if you 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 keep them away mm. in seclusion mm. they'll not have uh, others may not be inspired mm. you know, it's, it's but the very of essence of these protests is that they they are leaderless they're not led by anyone <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would like to 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 tell you that it's a panic mode for government right now and that's why they are going to go full throttle on to anyone who gets out because they know that they are they are they are 
infiltrated government is infiltrated at all levels by who by the the generation uh, zoomers like you said mm. in in courts there are young people in prison there are but, young but infiltrated people. is not a good word to use in the circumstances the <laughs> <laughs> how you say government is better or because, includes because the people because the people the people, yeah, the people yeah. you're trying to fight mm. are actually part of the team that is supposed to mm. fight and them. unlike previous contests uh, yes. these people don't have no fdc color you get, mm. they are because many of these young you know, people are actually sympathetic, sympathetic to, to, to the nrm and exactly Exactly. So it's 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 a bother. It's a worry for them, mm. and I think they need to find the most common ground to, to resolve these ma these matters, other than going to hit them to beat them. Because one day I will wake, you will wake up and police is like, now guys, we can't beat our own. Mm. We need to. But, but Derek, I wanted to, to ask you in a minute before we go into the break. You are an investigative journalist. Do you think that it's possible that President Yoram Seveni could have been fed false intelligence or being Always. misled by the corrupt who Always. want to hide behind him? Always. There has always been very, very uh, misinformation, like falsehoods given to President Museveni, and sometimes he he, he, buys, he, he buys them, mm -hmm. and then later he, he says, ah, I was misled. He's always coming out to say he was misled. <laughs> this is one of the reasons he was going to come out and say, I was misled on, uh, misled on this. He, All needs right. to, he needs to have better antennae okay. on the ground. Great. We'll take a short commercial break, and when we come back, the last segment of this show. KFM's Hot Seat. It's hot, it's live, provocative, and digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. To my FM. Welcome back from that commercial break. You're listening to 933 KFM. This is the Friday Hot Seat. Standing in for Andrew Mwenda is Mikwez Tabaro. Today in studio I have Derek Wandera and Jimmy Achalam. And we are discussing the major story of the week, which is the ongoing anti-corruption protests led by young people, otherwise known as Gen Z's. Uh, gentlemen, in this uh, last segment, I wanted us to turn the spotlight onto ourselves, the media. Uh, Wandera, how do you rate uh, the media's coverage of the protests? I, I saw an interesting, uh, someone got two pictures, I think three pictures, mm. of uh, Daily Monitor's coverage, The Observer, and uh, The New Vision. The New Vision said, anti-corruption protest flop mm. then uh, <laughs> mm. monitor had something else and yes. uh, the observer had something yes. else mm. but one thing i found uh, intriguing was uh, especially for the for the daily monitor and kudos to the to the editors they they always stepped in mm. uh, to 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 correct misinformation but also to clarify mm. i know there was a lot of misinformation circulating on monday and tuesday on uh, the right to protest, whether it was uh, 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 to be taken for granted or whether mm. it was limited and, and, and things like that. But how would you assess the, the media's role, especially in these protests? I, um, we Documenting are, the abuses, yes. but also informing citizens of what exactly is happening. We are in a very difficult time as, uh, as the mainstream media, especially, and we, we, have, uh, we have very very uh, serious things we need to deal with as uh, as 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 uh, as, as the, the mainstream media because of one we have we have social media there's a lot of citizen journalism happening and the citizen journalism that doesn't have any uh, kind of uh, gatekeeping mm -hmm. or or censorship or even like any kind of skill in terms of uh, saving the information that they have to bring out makes our work very difficult that's why um, when angling comes in in terms of um, in terms of how to, to 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 how to bring out the information, the angling is very very vital. Mm -hmm. You have an angling of monitor. You have an, an angling of of of, of uh, because when you look at observer, observer gave us what happened the entire day. Mm -hmm. Monitor came with the with the with the, with the headline. Uh, the protection, uh, the shield of protect of of, of corruption, of corruption. Mm -hmm. and uh, and a new vision says the the protesters have been uh, the protests flopped. The pro protests flopped. Mm. It all comes down to how do we how do we as mainstream media, how do we as journalists go together? What uh, what's the in, in, in uh, the uh, interior? Uh, what is it called? What is the in intention? Mm. What is at the back of your mind when you're going to the street? Do you go there with an open mind of observation, trying to get the best way of telling this story? Or do you go with an already biased mind of, I am going, I know police is going to crack them down. Or I'm going, but I know 
they are not going to go anywhere. They are not going. And we've heard all these stories from different um, newsmakers. We've heard them from different institutions saying these people are not going to have much to say. These people are not going to go to the streets. They are not going to be. They are going. To, they are cowards and things like that. So, when a newspaper or a media house comes up with such um, already made up decisions, they certainly are going to give out a lot of misinformation. Mm -hmm. And they are not going to contextualize in terms of how, what does the law say, mm -hmm. uh, what has been there before, mm -hmm. take us back, bring us to now, and then see, give us a picture of what's happening around the country, and I mean around other countries, the neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And it is in such context that a news or a journalist is going to be able to bring out the best information when they come, when they are open-minded. An open-minded uh, journalist mm -hmm. is certainly going to always give a very balanced a, story. A, a cardinal principle of journalism has always been to be fair and balanced and accurate yes. and to also give both sides of the both story. Both sides of the story. But what happens in this case where one side of the story is peddling what is clearly misinformation, as we saw this week with... Uh, the Uganda Human Rights Commission Twitter handle uh, mm. that falsely claimed that protesters were at fault because the right to march was not absolute. And in this case, they were echoing what the Uganda police had said. <laughs> so do you report that according to the Uganda Human Rights Commission? No. <laughs> As a journalist, I think you're supposed to bring out the law. And that's mm. where that's where research is very important. Knowledge is very important. Journalists are always are taken to be the most informed people in the, in the, in the, in the whole uh, community. Mm. So when Human Rights Commission is saying something like that. Mm -hmm. You have to go and research. Does does the law really say that? Mm -hmm. And then bring out the, mm -hmm. the, the what law. what the, bring out what Human but, Rights but Commission paper, is the saying. The paper will only then, come out if, uh, a few hours later, or maybe the next absolutely. day. But and, and, remember, and this is, interaction is happening in real time. That is the best thing about uh, about mainstream media mm -hmm. is that we have time to now contextualize things. Mm. When you are live streaming, mm. you're going to quote only what they're saying. Mm. And probably if you are good enough mm. to also pull out maybe uh, an article or a section within within the, any of the acts or, or, or the constitution. But mm. now, for us citizen journalists, we're going to get your story, come and break it down and and, 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 and begin to, to, to Mm. Put it into context and now bring the constitution. You, one <laughs> in most cases, whenever I'm writing, I have three uh, documents. I have the constitution, I have, I have the penal code act, I have the, I have then if I'm dealing with the human rights, I have the human rights act, mm. and then I have the POMA. I have POMA. Mm. So, public order management. Yes, the public order management. Act, such that I do not leave any scintilla of doubt in any of the stories I'm, I'm put, putting out. You, where does this leave? Where does this coverage leave the Daily Monitor? Clearly, we're not very good friends with uh, President Yorim Seveni, who has previously called this <laughs> newspaper the press. An enemy of do the you know people? the meaning of the press quest? Mm -hmm. The press is writing that that is not comfortable for everyone. Mm. That is press. Jimmy, so can, do you, do you I, think I, in I, the next State of the Nation address, uh, President Yoram Seven might sing out this media house for ridicule? I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's now a tradition for him to do that. Yeah. But he shows he religiously reads the paper. He does. He does. And listens yes. to our platform. He does. Yes. He but does. in that uh, story you just talked about, the human rights, mm. uh, I think... The Uganda Human Rights Commission. Yes, it was Dr. Kabumba Musinje who yes, came out to... Mm. So sometimes I think it's also not left to only the journalists in the mm. media houses to do. Mm. And in addition, they can be constrained, especially covering the protests. Mm. There were many, many places. Mm. So they also rely, they sometimes get footages from what's being shared on social media, mm. some which end up to be fake news. Mm. And then they have to retract and say, no, this, they, they do some... And, and there has been this debate mm. by, by uh, government of Uganda that somehow the media portrays Uganda in a bad light. But in light of what has happened in this past week, who is portraying Uganda in bad light? Is it the police officers on the streets who are brutalizing unarmed protesters who are marching peacefully? And now we have claims that some of the protesters who ended up in uh, police custody could have been uh, sodomized. If that happens in the country, shouldn't the press report just because we don't want to taint Uganda's image? Who taints Uganda's image to begin with? Still take them. It's, it's the action of the, <laughs> of the state actors. Care. Yes, it was supposed to take care of the people mm. and allow free, you know, freedom to protest and do things. Mm. So they, the way they react, mm. you can't just hide anything. If people are tortured, people are brutalized, mm. should, they, should that not be reported? Mm. 
in, in the name of uh, you know mm. trying to be and, you know, and uh, I was especially concerned by these uh, allegations of uh, sexual harassment especially some of the male victims claiming that uh, they were well, sodomizing it, it police custody especially now in light of the anti-homosexuality act clearly <laughs> police officers or members of the security forces would be in direct contravention of the act and they would have committed an offense so the institution can't shield them well, that, that's a very difficult <laughs> thing to discuss. But it also, but don't you find memories of, yes. you know, the NRA in, in, in northern Uganda? In northern Uganda, those mm. parks. Mm. So, if it's the alleg at this at this time, maybe it's just an allegation. Mm. They can say this. But the allegation is so serious that at least the institution of the police, through the spokesperson, would have issued a statement to say, look. These I, are, I think the spokesperson uh, said something and said that what? That these are outright lies? Of course they'll deny. They'll not say. No, but the Uganda Human Rights Commission would step in. Other yeah. bodies would, would step in to, to make sure that certainly such a thing did not happen because it would be such a grave abuse of human rights. If it did, mm. and if it's investigated, turned out true, then it would be very, very. Yeah, but, but do you feel that there is concern to, to, first of all, Clear the image of the of, of the of the institution of police or any other security agency that is alleged to have committed uh, such a uh, atrocious, uh, you know, they crimes. Will, they will always try. That's why they have the spokesperson coming up to issue a statement. That it will always be denial, not mm. saying this is true. Mm. Then maybe some public relations trying to act after, mm. but. It's mm. obviously very bad for the image mm. of the country. Wonder in a minute, where do you see these protests going? Do you see them extending well into next week? Because uh, we expect some of the suspects to be arraigned in court on Tuesday. They will certainly do. They will mm. certainly do. Even if there will be pockets of them, mm. I feel there is a lot of courage that's being uh, uh, there is a lot of courage that is being um, gotten from what has happened before. Mm. Even with the crackdowns, especially that there has not been any much tear gas or atrocities. I know that there's a lot of courage that people, young people especially, are gathering. Mm. And I, 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 I really know that they will come back on the streets next week. Mm. And who knows, probably again, uh, they will be, of course, taken in. But at some point, they will, the government will have to come back, sit down and say, uh, the young people, we need to address these matters. And I think that your voices have been heard. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, some uh, personal news before we bring the show to a close. I will be closing my chapter on uh, this uh, very radio station yes, after yes, 10 yes, years yes, yes. of appearing on the Friday hot seat. <laughs> Today is my last show. I'll be leaving the country early next month for further studies. But you'll be, and, but uh, you'll be coming back. I'll be coming back. So I'll mm. be away for a year. Thank you very much, our dear listeners, for being such wonderful listeners over the years. And uh, I'll be handing the month over to to Wandera and uh, whoever else will be sitting in this chair. So, sure. since it's a Friday, have a good night. Enjoy responsibly and a uh, weekend. Are you enjoy your weekend. Are you taking us somewhere? For I thought for you should be taking me somewhere. <laughs>